Hello and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about an example of using specific heat and latent heat. I'm going to talk about quite an important idea of thermal equilibrium too. So what I've got here is I have a penguin and this penguin's got a temperature and it's going to sit on a glacier. Now this glacier started at minus two degrees C and it melted and finally uh, when the it reached what we call thermal equilibrium, the maximum temperature it reached was 40 degrees C. I am assuming that all the energy um, is transferred 100%. There's no inefficiencies, no heat loss, anything like that. So what's actually happened is the penguin um, has got a fever and he sits on the glacier to cool down. The penguin is going to lose energy and the glacier is going to gain. And the maximum temperature they're going to reach is this thermal equilibrium. Now, to give you an idea of what, what I mean by that, if you think about it, when you first step into a shower, it's really, really, really hot. And then eventually you sort of acclimatize to it. Basically, the water cools down, you warm up, and then you're about the same temperature. This is all about equilibrium. The universe strives to get to this position. An example, um, and I'll tell you now, I'm not a biologist, I'm a physicist, um, so don't mark me on my biology here. But an example is looking at your cells and the bloodstream, the capillaries. If your cells need oxygen, there is a lack of oxygen concentration in them, and your bloodstream has a lot of oxygen in it, um, what will happen is diffusion from the bloodstream to your cells to normalise the oxygen, to basically make it in equilibrium. The exact same happens in temperature. Okay, so what I've got here, my question is that the glacier melts and the water reaches 40 degrees C. What was the starting temperature of the penguin? So, penguin has lost energy, glacier has gained. If I can find out how much energy the glacier has gained in total, I can start using um, equations to work out on the penguin situation. Okay, so... First thing I do is I write a little bit more information down. So this is the information I've been given from the examiner. I've got mass of my penguin is 20 kilograms. I have got my mass of my glacier is 150. My starting temperature was minus two and my end temperature was 40. And I've been giving all this information about specific heat and latent heat, okay? Now the first thing I do know is I do know the end temperature of the penguin. And that is 40 degrees C. Much like I said, thermal equilibrium, if that reaches 40, this must equal 40, because at that point, no energy would be transferred. What I then do is, before I even do any calculations, I just write the stages of what's happening to my glacier. So my glacier is going to go from minus 2 to 0, then it's going to melt, and then it's going to go from 0 to 40. Okay. There are three very distinct stages, and I'm going to call them A, B, and C, okay? And so this one is all about temperature change, so that's going to be specific heat. This one is about change of state, so this one's going to be latent heat. And this one here, again, is temperature change. And if I can find out in total how much energy was used to do this, that is how much energy the penguin has lost. And therefore, I could work out the change of temperature of my penguin. So, let's have a go. Section A. Okay. So this is specific heat. So I'm going to use the formula MC delta T. So that's going to be 150 times by, this is ice. So it's going to use specific heat capacity of ice, which is 2108 times by 2. Not really increasing by much. So 150 times by 2108 times by 2. And that is going to be 632400 zero, zero joules there. I'm now going to melt. So I'm going to be using ML. And that's going to be 150 times by the latent heat of fusion, because I am melting. So that's going to be 334 three, times 10 to the 3. Okay. And that's going to be 501123. Choose that. Okay. I am now going to be a liquid. I'm going to change my temperature, so I'm going to have to use MC delta T again. 
So that's 150, and this time it's water. So we're going to use a slightly different specific heat capacity. And my change in temperature is 40 degrees. So 40 times 4,200 times 150 is 2521234.5 joules there. So in total, my glacier has gained energy from here, here, and here. And I can find that out. So I'm adding this one to this one. And I get an answer of 7593240 joules. So in total, that is how much energy my glacier has gained. Which means that is how much energy my penguin has my penguin has lost. Okay. So the mass of my penguin was 20 kilograms. My specific heat capacity of my penguin was 3,100 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And the energy that I lost was 7593200 joules. Now I'm assuming that this penguin has stayed a solid the whole way through. The penguin hasn't melted, nothing's happened, it's just been a solid. So there's no change of state here. So let's have a go at this, let's actually have a go. I know that Q equals MC delta T. So 75932400 equals 20 times 3100 times my change in temperature. So my change in temperature. Okay. So I have a change of temperature of 1224.7 degrees Kelvin or degrees C. Okay. So here Okay, to find the starting temperature, I need to know what his end temperature was because I know that, here's an example, if I, my end temperature was 10 degrees and my change in temperature was 50, I know I must have started at 60 because I have lost 50 degrees to be at 10. Here, my end temperature is 40 and this is my change in temperature. So my start must be this plus 40, which is 1, 2, 6, 4.7 degrees C. Okay, he's a ceramic penguin. Okay, so that there is an example of using specific heat and latent heat in the same concept. And this idea of thermal equilibrium. My hints and tricks for you are as follows. When you read the question, write out what the hell is going on to one of the things. Write out that, okay, I've got sections. If you want to do it in sections like section A, then B, then C, and then add it together, that is perfectly fine. And it's a very easy way of laying it out and making your working clear and identifiable for the examiner. Coming back to it, remembering thermal equilibrium, looking at the object here. So once you've worked out how much energy one has lost, you know that's the one the energy has gained or vice versa. You can then use the appropriate things on the other object to work out the starting or end temperature of that object there. So that there is an example of using specific and latent heat to work out information about another object when they're interacting.